Hey guys, it's Christian with the Interactive and Immersive HQ. I got a video today about content creation for projection mapping in Touch Designer. We're gonna go over a couple pre-built networks that I have for different objects that I'm gonna be projecting onto. As you can see, this is one of them. Um, I'm not gonna focus on setting up the masking or projection tools in Touch Designer themselves. Rather, I'm just gonna go over a couple different visuals that I've created walk you through them and show you and give you some different concepts, tips and tricks about how I would go and, and exploit this kind of technology um, to create some cool effects. So let's get to it. So kicking things off, I got a network right over here as well as my Cantan Mapper window. And um, I'm projecting onto a box and specifically two sides of this box right here. And they're represented with this like um, left mask right here, which is on this side over here. And then this mask over here, which is on the right side. And the render network itself is just a line that's being instanced across a grid. That's, um, a single column and it's, um, just successive lines going up. And in addition to them being instanced, I'm instancing their color and just animating the noise that's color that's, um, uh, controlling its color. So it's giving the sense in, of these lines moving themselves, but actually it's just um, manipulating their color. And I have it so that the this null here is actually on both sides of this these quads. And the reason that this works is because the the lines themselves are exact mirrors of, of each other. But um, as you can see, there's a sense in which we're playing with the surface of this box, essentially. We're passing these lines that are wrapping around the surface of it and animating, giving the sense of um, uh, visuals on top of the object, where if we were to just put this into the projector itself, the lines themselves would be warped on top of the, um, the box. But um, this is one example that's that's um, playing with the surface of objects and playing with the surface of um, the things that we're projecting onto. And then the next one that we got, if I go in over here, we just have a rectangle with an empty fill and just a border. And that's being passed in here. And the feedback is being transformed as the scale is being shrunk and then we're um, manipulating the brightness, making it so that on each successive feedback, the border is getting darker and darker. So it looks like there's sort of a, a, a tunneling effect onto the texture itself. And if I take this null here and I put it into the um, surface of the object, we'll get these different, um, this, this tunneling effect that the the there is no sort of surface to this cube but actually something that's going inside of it and it's um, playing with the volume of the object itself and notably i have it so that this um, texture is being mirrored because if we were just to put it on both sides of it then we're going to get something where um, the the illusion of depth doesn't quite work because um, one is sort of disappearing into the other side. So we have to make sure that this is being mirrored right over here. Um, it didn't matter in this previous example, just because again, the, the lines are exact mirrors of themselves. And then finally, we got this last setup where I have um, some instance boxes in a cube arrangement where the cube is itself filled with smaller boxes. Um, and that's done by taking this grid. I copy this grid so that they stack one behind each other 10 times and pass it, you know, change it into some, some chop data, have our, our, uh, our geometry right here and then instancing it across that. So we actually get, um, this volume of cubes and notably I'm going and, um, changing this noise value right here. Uh, this is because the grid is itself is 10 by 10. So there's a hundred points in this grid and the copy is itself um, 10 times. So it's essentially 10 by 100. 
and I'm taking this noise and making it so that the resolution is 10 by 100 so that we're we're mapping each individual instance point to an RGB value on this texture. And I'm manipulating the rotation of these, these cubes, essentially. And um, I also have some cameras that are pointed at the um, sides of this cube over here. So I have a front-facing camera and a right-facing camera. And both of these are orthogonal so that there's no distortion of depth or anything. But if I take these different views and I pass them into the surfaces of this um, projection map and I undo this mirror right over here so that it's correctly orientated, we get a sense of um, both depth and surface because the, the volume or the shape that we're projecting onto is actually comprised of smaller and smaller cubes and you'll see this effect time and time again within projection mapping setups they'll have like kind of um a huge building sort of dissolve into smaller shapes but this is a, a combination of that that surface uh visual as well as that depth of visual that we explored in the the, the two previous ones but this kind of gives you an idea of visuals that work really well in projection mapping setups for faceted surfaces, so flat surfaces, um, ones that play with depth, ones that, that create that illusion that you're looking into something or you're looking at um, something that's being animated in, in front of your eyes. Um, in a way that a traditional just kind of 2D video isn't really able to do. Okay, moving on to our next setup. So I have a mannequin right here that, and um, it's markedly different than projection mapping onto a faceted surface like a cube or any other sort of like planar geometry. And the reason being that this is a much more complicated shape that I've had to trace out in Cantan Mapper. As you can see, there's quite a few different control points. And even then, we're probably well set to, to add some more just to make it have that extra level of polish. But um, the, the complicated thing that uh, we'll face with this is that um, we aren't as available to play with the sense of depth or um, three-dimensionality of objects that are much more complicated geometries like a mass uh like a mannequin torso and all the curves and things like that um, create a really interesting shape in terms of the mask but unless we're taking a step up in terms of our like projection mapping setup where we maybe have a high fidelity 3d model and we're you know aligning the camera to the position of the, the projector. So you're using something like cam snapper. Um, we can't do as much, but there are still some very interesting visuals that we can play with. And as you can see, I mean, this is a very straightforward, simple visual where it's just um, uh, an animated ramp with some noise. And it, just because the, the mask is so complicated it creates um an interesting visual in and of itself like regardless of what you're actually putting onto it and you'll see some different setups uh across pinterest or you know whatever mood boarding that you use where interesting masks if you um Ma just putting visuals onto them and, and texturing them correctly, like that looks pretty interesting. But um, we can also take it one step further where Canton Mapper itself is, um, it has these two different outputs right over here. And one of them is this mask with some kind of UV colors. And then here's the mask with the animation that's applied to it. And um, it handles this sort of window uh, comp um, functionality for us by, you know, we have our window options and we can toggle output. But if I um, undo the toggle, setting up your own window comp will actually do the same um, 
sort of uh, effect because it has that mask applied to it. So um, I have this network and I'm going to open this. And as you can see, it's the, the same output, but um, I have this rendered or the, this um, texture where I'm taking the edge of this texture right here, which is just the outline of the mask. I'm passing it into a null. I have it in a select right here. And then I have a ramp that's radial. It's animating it and tracing this kind of counterclockwise pattern. But um, I have to shift it over um, to match the center of the mask right over here. But as you can see, it's it's tracing the, the um, outline of our projection map. So there's a there's a kind of a fast running line that's tracing this torso essentially. And the the tricky thing with this, and there's probably a, a more complicated setup if I if we were to dive right into Cantan Mapper so that we were getting you know positions of uh, how it's transforming the texture that we're feeding into the mask. But if we take this and you know shift it over you can see it it has a different effect on the trace of it and if we had nothing at all there's um an incorrect way in which it's it's not uniformly the same speed across the mask of the or across the outline of the mask right over here um but we can always also take it one step further from this and we have our edge, and just like in our um, box setup where we were, um, had a rectangle and we were passing it into a feedback loop, um, we can do a similar uh, concept right over here where I have this feedback and it's um, put into a level. The opacity of it is changing based on some noise that I've put in so that it, it kind of or so an LFO over here actually. And the transform rather than shrinking, it's actually growing so that we have this effect where the outline of it is actually growing out, um, out of the mask itself. And you'll see this uh, pretty commonly in some different projection mapping setups. But if I feed this back over to here and I comp this over, then now not only am I getting this tracing outline of the mannequin's torso, but I'm actually getting this kind of like um, laddering or this, you know, dimension to the mask itself. And it's something interesting to sort of play with, you know, rather than, than focusing on something like depth, like we could in our planar example, we can focus on doing interesting effects with the mask itself. And there's some trickiness to it because we have to make sure that the the uh, transform is actually centering our feedback loop. But hopefully that gives you kind of an idea of, of some different animations that we can play with and how we can scale in complexity with the different um, projection mapping setups we have for more complicated ge geometry like a torso or... You could do some plants and where it's it's not so straightforward, not so simple for us to like outline and cut out a mask of our projection map. Hopefully you guys found that interesting um, of the sort of two different tacks for us to to tackle the 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 object of, of creating content with projection mapping in both like a pretty simple geometry and a much more complicated geometry. Um, I tried not to delve too deeply into how these networks were created, nor how the the tools themselves really work, just because the, the purpose of this video is just to give you ideas, uh, a springboard to jump off from and create your own animations. Um, I'm gonna include this project into the show notes or the, the description for this video. So you can feel free to download it. Um, obviously you're not gonna have the same objects as me. You're not gonna have the same projector. It's not gonna be situated in the same position. So it doesn't really help you to um, see and use the same sort of mass that I'm using, but to understand the kind of underlying concepts for how I'm creating these things, whether it's playing with the surface, playing with 
depth, playing with both at the same time, you know, playing with the mask. Um, there's lots and lots of different variations. And, and that's sort of the beauty of this industry is that we can mix and match. We can make things that are interesting. But hope you guys enjoyed. And see you next time. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.